everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a fake away number three. So today we are doing pizza. It's not quite turned out as I wanted it to go um, because we've had to buy ready roll pastry. I wanted to completely make the dough from scratch but there's no flour and no yeast in the shop. Still, people are still stockpiling. So we've had to do puff pastry. This is what we're going to be using. I think puff pastry is the correct one to use. I don't know, I don't think it is, but when I looked on um, their website, it says you can use it for pizza bases. But I'm not quite sure it's going to go quite how I wanted to, but we're going to have to roll with that. So yes, we're going to be doing pizza. Now, I want to do a starter and a dessert today as well. So we're going to be attempting to do dough balls. I don't think dough balls are going to work with push pastry, but we're going to give it a go anyway. And then for dessert, I'm going to do cookies. You know them Domino's cookies that I've never even tried? But apparently they're very nice. We're going to do them as a dessert. So I'm not rolling with a specific pizza chain today. Like I said, we've got the cookies thrown in, which is from Domino's. Dough balls always remind me of Pizza Express. And then the name of the restaurant, you'll have to wait till later on in the video. But that's another pizza chain thrown in. The only other thing about this is I really wanted to make some pizza boxes. Um, but... I don't think I've got the materials to do it. I did look on Amazon, but again, they were really expensive. So we're going to start with baking the cookies first, just because to get it out of the way, and hopefully it's the most easiest thing. So here are all the ingredients for the cookies. Uh, I'll link the recipe below that I'm using. I believe it's on American website because it's in like cups instead of grams. So I'm going to have to convert that. So I've also lined a baking tray with some baking paper, and I've set the oven to 190 degrees. She went to start by creaming the soft margarine and the brown sugar together. I started with a metal spoon, but then I thought I'd probably need a wooden spoon to mix it a bit more, but then the mixture was sticking to it, so we went back to the metal spoon. But yeah, just want to keep on mixing it until it's just a bit like that, how I've shown you here. And then you want to add the two eggs. It did say on the recipe to not kind of mix, pre-mix the eggs before you tip it into the mixture, but I definitely would have done because that was a mistake not doing it. You also want to add in the vanilla essence. It said add, I think, two to three drops. I probably did add a little bit more just to flavour it a bit more. Then, yeah, you just want to whisk that all together until it's all blended together. As you see, it's gone really lumpy. I do think that was because the eggs weren't pre-mixed beforehand, so I would definitely do that. Next you want to sift in the flour, you want to do this gradually so add a bit of a time, mix it and then add a bit more and mix it again. I'm not quite sure what this does but it's what the recipe told me to do. And you want to keep on going until it forms a bit of a mixture like that. Now, it was incredibly sticky um, and I thought that it no way would get into a dough, it was more like a cake batter so I did decide to add more flour. I did probably add a little bit too much flour. But yeah, I definitely need to add more because it wasn't forming a dough. I also then added the chocolate buttons or if you've got chocolate drops, whatever that you are using. Um, just want to make sure that it's all blended nicely together and then you want to form it into the balls. Um, I managed to make nine and then I also just flattened them down just a little bit. And then the recipe said to put them in the oven for eight to ten minutes but I did it probably for a lot longer, probably for more like 25 minutes. That's how they looked when they came out the oven. However, not quite how I pictured them to look. I wanted them kind of flatten a bit more they didn't as you can see I did have a taste and yeah it wasn't the best but also leave a picture on the screen of how they should have turned out and mine looked absolutely nothing like them at all so them cookies taste disgusting I will not be serving them as my dessert tonight I've just tried one and all I can taste is flour um, and as you can see by the clip, I tried to get all the little bits of chocolate out, so I ate them. Yeah, when it was cooking, all I could smell was flour in the kitchen. It's almost like I was breathing it in as it was cooking. So I had a feeling they just weren't going to taste good. I decided to add more flour into the mixture because the amount that the website told me to, it was, it weren't even a dough. It, it was like, it was cake batter almost. And no way would they have gone on to, like, rolled up into little balls to form cookies. I think I probably still went overboard with the flour, but you definitely need to put some more in. I don't know really where else I went wrong, but obviously I went wrong somewhere. Could be the fact that maybe the website I was using for the conversions were like slightly wrong. I don't really know. Yeah, that's the first fail we've had. 
Okay, so now it was time to make the dough ball. So I started by lining a baking tray with tin foil, and then there is my just roll puff pastry treat that I was using. Definitely not what I wanted to be using to be making dough balls, but yeah, it's all they had. And then I slowly started to roll it out and realised that there was barely any pastry at all. And that one tiny little bit, it actually looks quite a lot on camera, it was tiny, had to last. For three pizzas and some dough balls, realising that it was just going to be a complete disaster today. But nevertheless, I decided to cut off a really tiny bit for the dough balls. Um, obviously, I needed to save the majority for the pizza. Um, and then I did cut it into six small slices uh, to make six dough balls, so we'd have two each. Um, and then... I decided to roll them up. It did say in the pastry not to roll out so it loses the layers. Um, so I definitely knew they weren't going to turn out like dough balls because it was the wrong type of pastry. But anyway, so I decided to put them in the oven for uh, 190 degrees for about 15 minutes. Keep on checking them though to make sure they're not burnt. Okay, so now to make the pizza and I was trying to very gently spread it out as much as I could without um, splitting the pastry because I obviously did need it to be a lot bigger than what it was. Given up on that, I decided to make the base. So for that, I just used about half a tin of passata and also some tomato puree. I sort of just squirted in um, as much as I felt it needed. And then I did also add some salt because the tomato passata is very sweet. Um, I then stirred that on a medium low heat. Just keep on going until it starts to get a bit thicker. It will stick to the bottom um, and simmer slightly. So you do just want to keep on stirring that to make sure that it doesn't burn. Now it's time for the dough balls to come out of the oven. As expected, they did not turn into dough balls. They were sort of just like chunks of pastry. Um, but I did try one and it tasted really nice. So I decided that I would still serve it because it was nice nonetheless. Now for the toppings. So the only toppings I needed to prep was some mushrooms and peppers. So I just cut up them and then added them to a frying pan along with some oil. And then also along with some frozen onion. So just kept on stirring that until they were all cooked through. So now it was time to go back to the dough, so I just laid out three individual pieces of tin foil, which the pizzas were going to be going on. Okay, and when I went to take the dough off the piece of paper, because it had been out for so long, it had gone incredibly sticky, so I couldn't kind of rip the dough off without it getting all messed up. So I then just decided to roll it into a ball, add some flour, and then rolled out with a rolling pin. It did say not to do this on the pack, but I think that's more for if you were going for like sausage rolls and you need to see kind of them layers, but obviously I wanted a dough base, um, so it did work out fine in the end anyway. If you were doing it, it would be easier to just take it out of the fridge 10 minutes before you needed it, um, and then you wouldn't have that issue. So this is what they looked like when they were all rolled out. It wasn't a perfect circle or a rectangle would do anyway. And then I decided that I still wanted to try and replicate some type of crust, even though it was really thin. And um, so I just kind of curled up the edge just so it resembled some sort of a pizza. Okay, so next was the best part, assembling all the pizzas together. So here we have the passata, the onions, the peppers, the mushrooms, some spinach, some cooked chicken breast. Um, some tomatoes and the two types of cheese. So I just then started to spread the tomato paste onto the dough. I did end up doing quite a lot, but I probably still would have done a little bit more anyway because it sort of dries up quite a lot in the oven and then it was time to add the cheese. So I just wanted mozzarella on mine, so I added that onto mine and then my dad did want mozzarella and cheddar because he was going for more of a margarita style pizza. So I did that for my dad. And my mum doesn't like cheese at all, so I just left hers without cheese. Um, and the topping she wanted was mushrooms, peppers and spinach. So I just went ahead and added all of them on. I did add quite a lot of spinach because it does tend to shrink um, when you cook it. So like I said, my dad wanted a margarita, um, but I did decide to add extra tomatoes on top and he said that was a really good choice in the end. Um, but he did also want a topping of mushrooms as well. And for mine, I decided to go for all of the toppings basically just to use them up. Um, so I did take these chicken breast slices which are kind of like pre-cooked that you can buy from the fridge section and um, but then they will just kind of crisp up nicely in the oven and then I added the onions the peppers and the mushrooms along with some tomatoes and the spinach and yeah it was a bit of a strange concoction I suppose but it actually ended up tasting very nice as you will see later on after the disaster of the dough I ended up thinking they look quite good so I then put them in the oven at about 190 degrees in total for about 25 minutes in the end um, after the first 15 minutes I then decided to put tin foil on so the tops didn't burn and so that it cooked through evenly. But after uh, the dough is initially cooked you just keep on cooking it until you get the desired crispiness that you want. Okay so it's now time to go back to kind of like the presentation side of it and um, so I'll start with the sign. So as you can see I decided to go for Papa John's for the sign but the only bit we wanted to edit out was the John's. So what I simply decided to do was get a few different um, shapes shapes and sizes to try and completely cover up the sign. 
I had to play around a little bit just to completely get it covered, but once I did that, I turned all of the rectangles to white, so then it just looked more like the logo, and so that I could write over it in a moment. And then I added a text box and added the text I wanted, so I wrote Hollies as I wanted it to turn into Papa Hollies. So I changed the text to a deep red shade, and now it was time to work around with the font size so I did sort of still want to do you know that diagonal kind of down following shape with the logo but as I soon worked out this wasn't going to work so I had to see what I could do. So I didn't film this but for quite a long time I kind of messed around with all of the font shades and also the font it was so I went with this Hoffler text in the end which I thought was a really good match um, to the logo and then I found a bit more of a brighter red shade to get all the letters to fit that I wanted to squish up the shapes so I decided to kind of do minus on the character spacing which that did work a lot more. But I also still really wanted to get the effect of kind of bigger letters in the middle and smaller as you go out and um, if I was on word what you could simply do right now is kind of get the box and squish it up and it would work. It doesn't work like that on pages I searched the internet for ages um, and couldn't find any way to do it um, if you do know how to do it though, please let me know below because I'd love to kind of get the squished up text and everything would be fine. But as that wasn't working, I decided that I would still kind of keep it diagonal but I'd make it a lot smaller. And you know what, it actually worked okay in the end and I was short for time. Um, but yeah, I think that turned out really well. But the sign printed off and then I also did a smaller version um, for the logo so I could stick onto my t-shirt. Add a sticky tape on the back of that. And then now it was time for my outfit so I stuck that onto my t-shirt and then I had a navy polo t-shirt and some beige shorts. I don't know why, I just felt like this is what you'd see probably more likely in, in America, a pizza delivery guy in America would wear. It was time to take the pizzas out, so as you can see, like I mentioned, I did add tin foil on about 15-20 minutes in. Now everything was all prepared, it was time to open up the restaurant, so welcome to Papa Holly's. And yes, we did have knife and forks, I don't usually use knife and forks when eating a pizza, but because of the way the pizza turned out, it was much easier to. First of all, with the starter, so obviously were meant to be dough balls, but there were now blocks of pastry, but everyone seemed to like them, so that was all good. Then here's what the final finished products of the pizzas look like. They looked really, really great. After the disaster that I thought it was going to be, they turned out really nice. And my dad's one particularly, I think, looked quite professional um, and looked really nice with all the cheese on top. It's time to serve them. And as you can see, all finished plates. They did go down quite a treat. And let me tell you, I would definitely be making it again because it was very nice. But perhaps not so successful, so we didn't have a dessert that day. Um, as you can see, they were just, they were completely unedible. It honestly would have made us sick if we did eat them. So only one thing to do was to bin them. And good riddance of them. So now all it was time to do was to close up the restaurant and I had finished my shift for the day at Papa Holly's. So I hope you all enjoyed the fake away pizza and now it's time for the end clip. So if you haven't seen my first two videos, which were fish and chips and then Nando's, I do, um, and ending to summarise, round it up, and it also asked my family who had the meal what they thought of it, and then there's five criterias, so we're going to get straight on into the criteria. The categories are taste, waiting time, packaging and presentation, layout, which includes the sign and the logo, and then would you come back. The scores are out of 10, and we'll just get started with what they gave me. Also, before I do, um, I briefly mentioned it in the video, but yeah, my sister didn't want the pizza this week. Um, she's vegan anyway, and she's um, allergic to gluten, so it would have meant it was would have been harder to do, which I was quite happy to do, but um, she's not fussed about pizza anyway, so she wasn't bothered, so it was just uh, me, my mum, and my dad this week. So, for taste, my mum and dad have both given me a 9, so that's pretty good. Um, obviously, this doesn't include the cookies because they didn't try the cookies, um, but as you can see, the cookies were an absolute disaster. Um, as I said, I really don't really know where I went wrong. I think it was because the conversion rates from kind of US to UK wasn't precise. Um, and I don't think the recipe was that detailed. I will link it below anyway, um, so maybe you can give it a go. And then if you do it and it goes well, please kind of message me on Instagram or let me know in the comments how you did it. Because, yeah, I would really want them to turn out nice because they had some really good reviews. Um, but yeah, they didn't go too well. But the um, dough balls, which weren't dough balls, but nonetheless, they did taste really, really nice. And the little, like, kind of, like, pastry balls, I, I suppose. Um, and then the pizza was so, so, so nice. I would personally really definitely make it again. At the waiting time, my mum gave me a 9 and my dad gave me an 8. I'm pretty sure that day that the meal was bang on ready in time. Um, when I said it was going to be the past two weeks, I was a little bit late. But no, this week, I've kind of got used to how long I know it's going to take. The packaging slash presentation, I got a 9 from both. Um, there wasn't actually really any packaging and presentation. Um, so, I can't really think 
um what that sort of goes on i suppose how what how i displayed it on the plate i don't i don't really know i don't really think there is a packaging and presentation one um for this but they gave me a nine nonetheless and then for the layout which this includes the sign and kind of my outfit and you know the little logo i did um i got a 10 from my mum and a nine from my dad so that was a lot more basic obviously the nando suite was very heavy like packaging and stuff like that because uh, there was a lot more to do because I based it off a chain restaurant and even the fish and chips there was a little bit more to do but yeah there wasn't really much to do for the pizza could have used pizza boxes but one they were too expensive to buy um, and I didn't have the materials to make and then would you come back I got a yes from beef so that's really good like I said um, I thought it was going to go really really badly obviously the cookies didn't turn out um, well the dough balls didn't turn out well but they still tasted nice and again pizza I had a massive kerfuffle with like the dough but again it did actually turn out really nice so if you give any of this a go what i did in my video please comment below um if i've given you inspiration to do anything and also tag me on instagram if you do happen to upload any photos of it please make sure to like and comment on the video and if you are new here please subscribe i do a video every wednesday friday and sunday at five o'clock this is the third part in the fake away series i've definitely got at least three more coming up so yeah make sure to check out them as well if this is more your interested video they go up every friday thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video